Movies brief here. Today, I am going to explain a Japanese psychological short thriller film called Chess. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In the opening scene, the world chess champion Akira Kato is playing a match of chess against a computer called the Super Blue at the Special Chess Exhibition. While Akira's brain can only calculate three moves in a second, Super Blue can calculate up to 200 million moves in a second. The chances of Akira's winning seem low, but if he loses, he will be the first player in history to lose to a computer. As the intense game continues, he is visibly struggling. At last, he drops his king, accepting his defeat. The room goes silent, and no one can believe that the world's most talented chess player, who had never lost a single match, just lost to a computer. Akira sits with his head down, not being able to process what just happened. The host mocks him as the audience laughs, and reporters click pictures of the humiliated, former Grand World Champion. Akira bangs the chessboard in anger, breaking it in half. Three years have passed since the incident. After the last match, Akira has stopped playing chess, and no one has seen him ever since. The following scene shows us many homeless people sitting on the side of the road on a cold morning. One of them is Akira, who has spent all his money on alcohol and gambling, and is now living on the streets. A fancy car stops by them, and two men in black suits step out of it. They forcefully pick up Akira and drive him away. He is taken to a mansion where he is welcomed by a wealthy old man. The man reveals that he knows who Akira is, which is surprising considering he has changed his name and identity entirely. When Akira inquires about who he is, the man says it isn't important. He simply wants to play a game of chess with Akira. He reveals a chessboard on the table, which makes Akira almost puke. He composes himself and makes an excuse, but the truth is that the thought of chess makes him sick at this point in his life. He turns away from the chessboard, not being able to look at it. Akira is the sorest loser in history. The old man says he lost a lot of money betting on Akira's last match. Since Akira doesn't have even a single penny, the man wants him to play a game to compensate for his loss. Akira is unsure about the man's actual intention, but he knows he doesn't want to do any business with him. To get out of the situation, he bluntly tells the man that he doesn't play chess anymore. Moreover, he doesn't want to be a millionaire's plaything. The man picks up the king on Akira's side and says that he has lost without even playing. This reminds Akira of his last defeat, which makes him furious. He stops the man and asks him to move his pawn instead. Satisfied that he has finally persuaded Akira, the old man plays his move. However, Akira refuses to turn towards the chessboard or touch the pieces. Without even looking, he tells the man to move all of his pieces, confident that he will win the game anyway. We notice that the old man is wearing an earpiece and talking to someone while playing. Akira walks to the window where he sees a group of men downstairs wearing white and black clothes and facing each other. The pattern they are standing in is exactly the same as the pattern on the chessboard right now. As the old man kills one of the pawns in the game, the man who is in the pawn's place is stabbed and killed. Akira freezes in shock at what he has just witnessed. He asks the man if this is some kind of joke. The man says that the pawns are mere soldiers, so he shouldn't be sad about one's death. Akira runs downstairs to check the dead person for himself and finds him on the ground while the other players stand still in their places. He takes the knife out of the man's body and sees that he is still alive. Even on the verge of death, the man smiles and asks Akira what his next move is. After the man takes his last breath, the players around him walk away, leaving Akira with a knife and a dead body in the middle of the street. A woman sees him in the position and assumes that he killed the person. Akira freaks out and retreats, stating that it wasn't him. In the following scene, he is at his former doctor, Saichi Tomoda's office. The doctor is surprised to see him after so many years. He and Akira's wife, Kumi Kato, have been looking for Akira for the past three years. A flashback from three years ago shows us that after losing the game with Super Blue, Akira had lost the will to live. He used to get nightmares of chess pieces trying to kill him. The nightmares turned into hallucinations, which made his health even worse. He had always compared his life to a game of chess, and his wife was the queen. So, when he lost the match, he left his queen, believing he didn't deserve her anymore. Akira tells the doctor about the incident earlier and says he might be in need of a psychiatrist. The doctor assumes he dreamt of the guy being killed, but Akira insists what he saw was in fact real. The doctor asks him to go home and rest because his mind is still fragile. 
Following that, a printer at the doctor's cabin prints out a paper on its own. The paper says, what is your next move? Akira realizes that the match of chess he started that morning is still going on. He shouts that he wants his pawn moved to the E3 position. Then, the doctor opens a book to see its pages have turned into a chessboard. The printer prints another paper that says in the next move, the old man's queen kills Akira's knight. The knight just so happens to be the doctor, Tomoda. He vomits blood and dies instantly. Akira is left shocked when he sees a picture of the doctor riding a horse on the wall, meaning the doctor was his knight. The cup he was drinking from earlier also has a chessboard pattern, so Akira assumes the coffee was drugged. A nurse watches them through the door, but doesn't do anything to save the doctor. She walks in only after he is dead and asks Akira what his next move is. Akira runs outside, trembling in fear, when he comes across a little kid holding a drawing with the current format of the chessboard. It is clear that he is also involved in the game when he asks Akira the same question. Akira answers that he wants to move the king to the E2 position. The kid tells him that the king will end up dead, making Akira run in the other direction. He gets a vision of people who have died because of the game and starts hallucinating chess pieces trying to kill him. As he runs away, he reaches a parking lot where the cars have been parked in the format of the chessboard. Unaware of this, he gets in the car that is supposed to be the bishop and tries to start it. However, similar to a bishop in chess, the car only moves diagonally. He leaves that car alone and gets on the one that denotes the rook. The car doesn't start because it is the opponent's turn to play. The rook from the other side crashes into his car, killing his rook. Akira is tripping balls. Following that, Akira goes to his old house, only to see that it is on sale. The rook, also known as the castle, was actually his house in real life. Now that Akira gets the hang of real-life chess, he realizes that the queen is his wife, Kumi, and her life is in danger as well. He goes back to the old man's home, claiming that he wants to quit playing the game, and asks for his wife. However, the old man asks Akira to accept his defeat and remove his king to the end of the game. This again reminds Akira of the time he was humiliated after losing a match with the Super Blue. He decides, screw his wife, his pride is more important. With determination, he continues playing the game and asks the old man to move his king forward. The game goes on for a long time and most of their pieces are out. At last, Akira is only two steps away from winning the game and the old man can do nothing to save his king. However, before he can play his turn, two men in suits forcefully take him away. In the following scene, the old man and Akira are in a stadium that has a life-size chessboard in the middle. The chess pieces are people who will die with a single wrong move. The old man says that their situation is similar to an Arabian king who used to play chess with his prisoners, killing them on the spot. He states that chess is a game without emotion because the players sometimes have to sacrifice their own pieces in order to win. For Akira to win the game, he will have to move a knight to checkmate. However, if he does that, the old man will kill his queen. Akira turns around to see that the queen is actually his wife, Kumi, who has been tied up and is held at knife point. With tears in her eyes, she shakes her head, asking Akira to save her. Now, Akira can either win the game or lose his wife forever. He tries to move from his box to stop the man, but a sniper rifle fires close to his legs as a warning that moving will get him killed. The old man asks him for the last time if he wants to sacrifice the queen or accept his defeat. He also adds that a real champion would think logically and do what is needed to win the game. But Akira tells him to save the queen without hesitation. His wife is more important to him than winning a match. Everyone is shocked at his decision. He moves in front of her and spreads his hands, accepting his defeat. The opposing knight walks towards him with a knife and stabs him. At last, Akira falls to the ground. However, after his death, the old man smiles and claps for him in appreciation. Just then, Kumi's hands are untied. She smiles while looking at her husband's body, clearly delighted with what just happened. More surprisingly, the man who died in the first round, Dr. Tomoda, the nurse, and everyone else that Akira met during the game, arrives at the arena while clapping for him. Then, Akira gets up from the floor, confused as to why he isn't feeling any pain. It turns out that the knife he was stabbed with was fake. It is then revealed that the game was a trick to get Akira out of his depressive episode and make him play chess again. He has been in a worse mental condition since losing the last match with Super Blue. So, to help him get better, this crowd of people traumatized him for life. The doctor with Kumi and the old man orchestrated the entire game as a part of shock therapy. The old man is actually the inventor of Super Blue, 
He wasn't happy that his creation had made a great chess player like Akira stop playing. So to make up for his mistake, he organized and funded the game. This entire time, Akira was playing with Super Blue, who had been passing answers to the old man through his earpiece. The man reveals that the computer couldn't comprehend Akira's self-sacrificing move, because of which it has malfunctioned, meaning that he has finally won a game against the Super Blue. The movie ends as Akira and his wife hug, while everyone else claps for them. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.